Hello, my name is Lucas, and I'm Lucky Knight from I'm Brony and I'm Proud, and you are listening to the MBS Show. Yeah! Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 148. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Rom. Hello, all you happy people. Hey, Rom. How are you doing, man? Well, the power is not out, so I'm happy. <laughs> Yay, you missed the first show of the new year. I know, right? Yeah. First, we had internet connection problems. Then the electricity went out. Then this guy. <laughs> yep, that guy. That guy. <laughs> so how are you doing, man? A rough start of the new year, but still kicking it. We're going to let some minor difficulties stand in the way of art and progression. <laughs> is that the word progression? Progress? Progress. I think progression is a word. If it's not, I call it trademark. <laughs> it is a word, but hey, whatever, man. So also joining us today is Lycan. Hello, everyone. Hey, like, uh, how are you, man? Hey, I'm pretty good. Uh, back again, second time in a row. Yes, yes, I'm back again. I have been eating way too much chocolate over this Christmas period. So, sore throat still there or better? Uh, my sore throat is much, much better. And, um, yeah, it, I'm feeling good. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. And also joining us is Lucas. Hi, guys. Hey there, Lucas. How are you, man? I'm very well, thank you. It's uh, another humid night in Brisbane, but I'm, I'm doing okay. Getting used to the Brisbane weather. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So you're not locally from Brisbane then? No, I'm originally from Melbourne. And if we go even further back in time, I was actually born in Tasmania in a little place called Hobart, which is more of a town than it claims to be a city. <laughs> Wait, where's the Wolverine from, like, the animal itself? The Tasmanian Devil, it was not Wolverine, Norman. No, no, I'm just, I'm just wondering, because I'm just wondering. <laughs> well, um, Tasmania is more famous for the Tasmanian Tiger, which apparently went extinct. Wow. Well, no, it did go, go extinct, and it may have been spotted on the mainland, which I'm glad to be living at at the moment. <laughs> oh, that's still good. If I'm not mistaken, also, they also have a place called... Mini Malaysia, something like that. Mm. That sounds like a grocery store. (laughs) Now I've got to check this place out. Sounds very mysterious, Norman. Yeah, I know. That's what I heard. That's why I heard. It's on a local TV show documentary kind of deal where people from Tasmania, kind of immigrants and whatnot. Uh, Long story, long story. But anywho, Lucas, this is your first time on the show, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, all right, all right. So um, with that, I need to ask you the four important questions before we start. So question number one is, favorite character? Rainbow Dash, absolutely. 20% cooler and, you know, nothing beats a sonic rainbow. Well, and also has Rose Marketing Horse. <laughs> <laughs> so why Rainbow? Um, I guess it's she's the character I resonate with most. Um, because I, I guess I'm a little bit cocky. <laughs> I, well, I can be. I don't know, the, the confidence factor and just, you know, not, I guess not afraid to te- tell it like it is or generally I just tell it, I tell it like it is and and then I face the consequences later. <laughs> um, <laughs> but generally, yes, um, um, as a friend, I am, I guess I consider myself quite loyal and it's, you know, um, it's friendship first and then, you know, once you've lost that, well, it'd be very difficult to get it back. Be on my good side, and I'll be your best friend. Be on my bad side, well, just won't talk to you ever again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good call, good call. Uh, words to live by, words to live by. And favorite episode? Oh, gosh, there are so many. But the one that comes to mind is Art of the Dress. Um, you know, I'm a creative person, and as we all are. And I can definitely relate to the stresses of, um, you know, creating something special and, you know, trying to get it out. And um, mainly, because, yeah, I, 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 my, my primary, my primary role is I, I work as a filmmaker. You know, doing promotional videos for a living. So sometimes it can be quite stressful, especially when you're trying to, you know, give people what they want. Especially <laughs> sometimes, you know, most of the time they don't know what they want, so I have to find out what they want in the first place. Wow, that is relatable for every creative person out there. <laughs> sure is. So, how did you become a fan of the show? How did I become a fan of the show? Well, um, I guess my story is similar to similar to many, you know. 
Um, it comes from a little bit of a dark place. Well, you know, at the time when I uh, lost my job, um, my yeah, my girlfriend left me. Um, well, not not because of, of the job. Well, maybe it was part of that. And I was really <laughs> in a good place. And I think, God, what am I going to do with my life? You know, it's going downhill. And, and I I actually went back to an online community that I had visited for a while called um, the Rat and Link community. Oh, damn. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, they're a great, <laughs> great couple of guys. And, you know, I was on the chat one day and, you know, some guy was just, you know, said to me, you know, I want you to check out this documentary. I said, okay. It's like, you know, I watched the whole thing, and I did. And it was um, Ballad of a Brony by Saberspark. And, yeah, one and a half hours later, I was like, okay. This is probably one of the answers I've been looking for to my problems. And started watching the show. Um, I, You know, I would like to say that My Little Pony was the, you know, <laughs> the savior. But, you know, I, I did, you know the usual things like counseling and of course acupuncture which I highly recommend to everyone and it's not like in the matrix of a thousand needles in your body uh, I get your point <laughs> so yeah I mean um, and then you know watched one episode and it you know and then the second and then the third and so on and then then joining the Facebook groups and uh, meeting some <laughs> yeah, yeah. Meeting, meeting some awesome people and you know I was bit of an outcast in, in high school and what's cool about the Bruni community is that it looks like everyone that you know didn't <laughs> didn't feel you know that felt out of place found a place and it's like we're all you know fairly similar and um you know the weirdos the the well I guess the people that dare to be different or in my case I was just born different and <laughs> I mean <laughs> I've, tr- <laughs> I've tried to conform many times and failed uh, <laughs> <laughs> so stick to what you know, I guess. It's good, it's and, good. Yeah. So basically, the show, well, the show speaks to you on a spiritual level then? Mm, absolutely. Okay. I mean, the core values that it represents, uh, it it reminded me what was good in the world. Um, stuff that, I f- you, know, you know, you know as a kid, but you just, you know, forget over time. Mm. So it was really good to be reminded of that. Hmm. I heard a lot of those answers too. And last question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? <laughs> um, I guess to sum it up in one word is weird. <laughs> um, right. um, I guess I could do the breakdown. So yeah, my mum thinks it's the most weird of all. Um, but I think she does like the idea that I do a podcast mm-hmm. and called I'm Brony and I'm Proud. And we'll get to that later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And my my younger brother, he's actually probably the most cool about it. He's actually watched um, on three seasons. Oh, okay. um, but unfortunately, he stopped at season three because I don't know. It was though I think there was a, some misses there, and then you know he gave up. But at least he gave it a go and watched it. So you know he he knows. <laughs> well, you know uh, the one Christmas he got me pink, and they got me Pinkie Pie. <laughs> so there's something there. And well, and the youngest one I. He he asked me one time that um, you know why why do I love the show and the one thing I like to say is that it's it's a symbol of innocence <laughs> you know an innocence we you know forget we've lost or the world tells us we've lost but you know just simply forgotten as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. All right, that's an awesome answer. And your friends? <laughs> um, it just depends how good friends they are that I tell them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So anyway, Lucas, thank you for answering the four important questions. And let's move on to the next topic, which is guest time. And, well, it's your time to shine. And Lucas, you said that you were a podcaster for I'm a Brony and I'm Proud. Yes, I'm Brony and I'm Proud. Yes, um, Friday nights on uh, on the Hive Radio. <laughs> Plug. <laughs> anyway, anyway... um. Before we officially go in, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Okay, so my name is Lucas, and I also go by Lucky Knight um, for the podcast. But generally, I've been a filmmaker for over a decade, sort of on and off. I went to film school and spent six years, <laughs> um, and three degrees later, I postponed the inevitable, which was, yeah, getting into the workforce. And at the beginning, it's hard. And still, it's hard, <laughs> but 
I am doing something that I love. And originally I originally got into sort of uh, documentary filmmaking. And generally I take that approach in, you know, everything I do. And, you know, I've had, you know, bits here, jobs there, here and there, and um, worked at some places. Yeah, building up skills over time and, you know, still trying to crack crack the market, so to speak. And, you know, with the with the rise in social media and, you know, trying to get businesses to adopt that. I also do photography as well. Um, it's now sort of merged into a thing called content, as we know. And uh, <laughs> the one thing that's famous for content is the fandom. Could there be a parallel of the rise in social media with the fandom? And hopefully hopefully such drive will, you know, <laughs> filter out to other things as well, including my own professional pursuits. Yeah, I would have to agree. I would have to agree. The cross-pollination of content, as they say, with uh, social media does, well, does relate. Let's take Markiplier, for example. He's a content provider. He creates content for his audience. Audience enjoys what he do. And he sells swags or whatever else and supports other charity events and whatnot. And gets his name out there. He works with people like um, Eagle Raptor for his album and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, uh, with us content provider, we work hard. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, and now it's not just for me creating content, but also providing strategy mm -hmm. um, and working with businesses directly to sort of um, build that well, social media strategy for the future. I mean, it may, you know, may seem to some people pointless now, but I strongly believe it's got tremendous long term value um, for the future as why well, you know, um, as a way that companies are now connecting with people on an equal level as opposed to like, you know, a lot of company, there's still a few companies out there that still believe in the eighties, that it's still the eighties where, you know, you make something and you, you know, drive it down people's throats mm -hmm. without them saying anything. But that's clearly not the case now because, mm -hmm. you know, now people can talk back and a different kind of relationship has to develop between a consumer and company. Oh, I totally agree. I totally agree with that mindset because, well, take a look at ponies. Um, if they were not, where they are now and they just sell their toys they won't get the earnings that they get now with the content or with the products that they're selling to the brony market which are the Funko figures the comics and well shirts from We Love Fine and also other places so yeah um, social media and marketing works but we're not into that. We're not going to talk in depth in that because I don't have a marketing degree. <laughs> I just, <laughs> well, I just, no. I just know what I Neither like. Neither do I. But um, <laughs> the reason why I moved up to Brisbane was for was for a marketing position. So you know, you never, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, word of mouth is still king, though, because I mean, that's how I got into the fandom. I was just, it wasn't due to any advertisements or marketing or anything like that. It was just, oh, hey, this is cool. Come check it out. So I did, and that's how I got into it. So, yeah, word of mouth is still king. Mm -hmm. So true, so true. So, Lucas, you said you were a documentary film director or filmmaker? Yeah, filmmaker. I mean, uh, so I, I plan, I I edit, I film, do the whole lot, really, mm. pretty much. All right. And there's so many... So many people like me out there, you know, and especially, you know, coming out of film school and, you know, I kind of really, <laughs> I kind of really feel for them. And um, I guess, you know, one of my long term visions is to, you know, create a company where um, sort of uniting all these content creators and getting them to, you know, cooperate and work with businesses. But, you know, then I'm not sure how far ahead I've been trying to, you know, growth hack it and speed <laughs> it up. But as you know, you know, technology is far easier to change than people. <laughs> mm, true that, true that. So i got a question for you. H have you seen the Brony documentary by John Delancey and Michael Brokoff, was it? It is an absolute favorite of mine. Um, for the longest time, uh, Battle of the Bronies, that was on the top of my list, and then, that, you know, that, <laughs> that came along. Like with all cool things, it's, like, it's easy to criticize. But for me, I think it's extremely well done, especially the animated sequences. Mm. It really puts a real face to the people in the fandom and seeing people from all walks of life and different, you know, personalities and mental states. And probably that's one of the coolest things about the fandom is that it's such a mixed bag of people. Um, and, and somehow, you know, we've been united for a show that was originally designed for little girls. 
I think it's, we're just helpless with colorful ponies who, you know, represent the best things of humanity. And of course, John Delancey can be a bit, a bit of perfect host. And I love that his story is that he, <laughs> yeah. he, he, he totally forgot that he did the voice <laughs> for Discord in the first place. Yeah. Oh, that story was awesome. Oh, fun fact. If you go look at the credits for that documentary, my name's in there. You helped fund it, didn't you? Yep. Good on you, man. I wish I, wish I, no, I, nice. I, wish I picked that up. Yeah, I, I wish know. I picked up on that earlier. Yeah, I believe in the project for what he wanted to do. Some people, well, some people were not happy with the results because it wasn't the brony doc that they wanted. Mm. But hey, uh, it's understandable because some people have expectation, and some people, well, yeah, it's hard to say because uh, it's one person's vision from one person's expectation. You should know this, right, Lucas? Yes, all too well. <laughs> so anyway, enough with said job. I want to know about the other job, which is your podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Funny how I got into it. Well, funny is always another word for strange. I guess probably a few months ago, you know, one person said to me, oh, you've, you know, you've got a radio voice. And then two people later, two other people later, okay, three people tell me I've got it. All right, maybe there's something to this thing. And then I think a few months passed since then and i thought okay hmm well i like the idea of doing a radio show and checked in with my old own community radio station and well six months of volunteering was just a little too much time for me to put in you know to have a show on the air Mm -hmm. and then i was talking with um a good friend of mine paul hawk center who i think is the king of australian bronies (laughs) um really awesome cosplayer and um an engineering genius as far as i'm concerned I guess we could talking, and I don't know how the idea came forward, whether it was from me or for him, from him. But eventually, I just put out put out on Facebook. It's like you know, putting I want to put together a talk show, you know, and um, you know, get to know the bronies. And I think the reason I like is that you know, there's a few reasons why I did it. Um, or you know, probably as the show is evolving, I, I actually learn what those reasons are. <laughs> um, one of which was to learn what it means to be a brony. It's an awesome way to make new friends. And I get to learn stuff that I wouldn't otherwise know. It's actually sort of documentary in nature because I'm sort of sharing other people's stories and those stories are quite fascinating. And it's it's amazing how quickly you see a lot of similarities come through and there's some awesome differences as well. So we're now 10 episodes in and I, and I say we because it's a, it's made by the community. It wouldn't be made possible without, this, without the help and support of well, the people that I interview for the show. So we're 10 episodes in, and we'll be resuming transmission in, um, yeah, from next week for 2015 for our second season. So looking forward to it. It's very much a grassroots show, you know, talking to bronies at that level, on that fandom level. So it's starting with Australian bronies, but hopefully I can really sort of branch out and talk to um, people from the other corners of the globe. It's sort of the coolest thing is I've been able to interview also um, awesome people like aviators, uh, Mr. Bulk Biceps himself, Michael Dobson. Of course, we know Bulk Biceps as Snowflake and Roid Rage, and of course, the Shake Ups in Ponyville. So, um, looking forward to um, to the other people I get to meet as well. Oh. Thanks to the power of Twitter. Awesome, man. Awesome. Like you, you said, like um, Bulk Biceps or Michael Dobson. I, I see that you talk to him twice now. <laughs> it's very interesting. There was um, <laughs> I I did ever. Evident- it was um the interview we did was um half for interview and half Q and A. So <laughs> that week only enough time to edit <laughs> an uh, interview. And, hey, podcast and secret, man. Podcast the secret. Uh, it's cool, man. It's cool. It's podcast the secret. I I know the I know how it. Mm, let's just say I know how it feels. <laughs> yeah, it it takes a bit of time to edit um one podcast. Um, <laughs> it takes about eight hours for me. But then again, mm. I like to really, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm a bit of, yes, I am a perfectionist and I come from a family of perfectionists. So, so wait, you started this two months ago? Um, it was about me a September, August, wasn't it? Somewhere around there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat and look at my outlook. <laughs> <laughs> because from what I can see on your, what should I call mm. this? Uh, SoundCloud, yeah. Uh, on your SoundCloud, it says uh, two months ago. From yeah. The first episode. Well, I guess if we're yeah, if we're looking at that, definitely two months. But it's been um, in process since um, since October last year, ah. and yeah, perhaps earlier, like Lycan said. Oh, okay. 
Well, trust me, um, once you pass your 50th episode, you don't really care about quality. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, well, yeah, this show this show sure does. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, sweetie, but you're gonna kill me later on. All right. Norman doesn't mean that only. He doesn't mean that. It, it's a lot no, of love no, that goes no. into every episode. True that because um, I I cheat by having a personal robot assistant named Sweetie Bot who edits the show for me and she removes all the cuss words like. That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <for> that, Norman. <laughs> Hey, James is not here, so someone needs to pick up the slack. Man, yeah, no worries. I just replaced her battery, so she'll be fine. <laughs> Yay. Uh, oh, I did forget to mention that this is a PG-13 show, right? Mm. Surprise, yeah. surprise! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. Okay, so is mine. <laughs> Yay. So, what inspired you to do the podcast? I'm tempted to do the um, Miss America answer, and it'll be like... The world, God, <laughs> of course, well, and, and it gets in the, <laughs> we're using the Phantom, it's like, yep, so, so, so that's, that's my witness. <laughs> well, I guess it's like I said before, it's, um, but I think, oh, well, what inspired really is, I wanted to learn what, what it means to be a brony, because I think at that point, I still wasn't so sure what a brony, <laughs> what being a brony meant. Um, and I guess... I can sort of take on, I can actually share the sort of up to now the three lessons I learned. Well, the main one is that being a brony is it's not that you just like the show, but you at least have to adopt the values um, that the show represents. And that's the most basic level. Um, and then the next level up, it, you know, and, and then grows from there. And then, you know, um, you can be, you know, more or less engaged in the community, but you definitely have to adopt the values. I think that goes without saying. Um but then again, you've got the other level where, you know, you're engaging in the community, you're sharing content, you know, you really, you know, and putting your input into it. And then and then if we're going really the third level, the third tier, or it could be always then considered a side tier to the second level, um, the creative bronies, you know, who really, you know, creating stuff and contributing to it. So um, I thought, you know, I've seen so much of the, the fan art created and maybe, you know, I was thinking, Gee, I'd like to create something as well, but I'm not exactly sure what. I still debate with myself sometimes whether I'm, if I'm actually creating something because I'm sort of I'm sharing other people's stories. But if it's um, if we're talking about it as an actual you know piece of content that's being delivered, then I guess yes, yes it is. Um, but you know, someone said to me that um, it might have been you like and that uh, <laughs> sometimes you just create something without being creative and you just you know just focusing on creating. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Don't forget, an important part of being a brony is to buy all the merchandise, ponify your environment, and have plushies everywhere. Oh, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Mandate law by the brony community. If that's the oh. case, then I have failed miserably. Oh yeah. <laughs> One thousand just dungeon. Oh, I've got I've got a little bit of merch. I mean, you know, I've got the box sets of seasons one and two, and I, you know, Celestia knows when the next seasons are going to come out on box sets. Got Equestria Girls and Rainbow Rocks on DVD, and I've got a, of course I'm proud of my you know my little dashy plushie. So um, you know, give you know uh, Bernie's out there, I've got a plushie, give it a hug. You know, don't hug it all to yourself. It ain't no Apple Bloom plush, so it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I've got the Apple Bloom plush, but um, being a Bernie is definitely not about any of that merchandise or anything. Yeah, it's nice to have, but I mean, just uh, following the show, as you said. Adopting the values, that's the important parts of being a brony. True that, true that. So, by the way, Lucas, um, before you start your show, did you know that there were other brony podcasts out there besides yours? Or you knew and, like, heck, I'm going to join in too? I'm not sure what I was aware of. I think um, it's part of my personality. I, I tend to just go and do stuff and then... And then... <laughs> you know worry about the consequences <laughs> later so I think yeah I just went and did it and um, I think I think if I had you know if I was really immersed in other people's podcasts I might have actually been discouraged from doing it too because mm-hmm. um, you know some of them are really really good but not that I've really listened to many of them I guess maybe I started to listen to them more when I you know started the, started the Umbrony and Unproud podcast see what's out there probably one podcast I've seen that goes for three hours long and it's 
crying out for a piece of editing, my goodness. Um, mm. With my podcast, I think, um, you know, I tend to record for an hour, and it's amazing how much time we waste breathing and saying, um, and ah. Um, so um, I'm not sure if Sweetie Bot um, takes that out for you, but, um, yeah, she certainly bugs the hell out of me, unless I'm talking to someone who, you know, knows how to, you know, hold their breath and, you know, talk for a decent amount of time. Mm, true that. She tries her best to go edit the stuff. Sometimes she gets lazy, so, uh, Rom, change my trees. Right back at you. But um, you said three hours podcast. What podcast would be so boring as to record for three hours? Yeah, I tuned in for about the first five minutes and then I just stopped. <laughs> hmm. I was like, I saw it was like, re- oh my goodness, really? And then, you know, and then, you know, there are some that, you know, go for an hour. But um, since I primarily work in video, I tend to work with a three minute limit for, for videos. And anything more than that, you have to have, you know, content that's engaging and, you know, mm. and nothing that's going to distract from the reality of the show. The shows we create are our own sort of versions of the world or little worlds within it. It's like you go see a movie and the moment you're, you know, you're taken out of that reality, it's very difficult to get back into it. And it's not your fault. It's the film's fault. Mm, true that. <laughs> or the host or the editor or the people who <laughs> oh, run the show. Absolutely. There's, there's, a whole bunch of people, there's a whole bunch of people that Bronies can blame. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks, Amy Larson. It's way easier to criticize than to, you know, provide positive feedback. Sometimes, you know, words like good job can go a long way. True that, true that. Having a fan comment on your um, work is good. It's a positive feedback. That's that's what we all ask, really. Like, a faith of a like, or a good job, I enjoyed this episode, or saying that your episode sucks, why is it three hours long? Make it short. <laughs> that could <laughs> also work. Wow, I'm yeah, criticizing your own show. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Your show's bad and you should feel bad. Uh, I cry every night. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lucas, I noticed also that your show is on the Hive Radio. So, how does that work? Um, so, yes, um, when when my episodes are ready, um, I um, I put them up to SoundCloud, and um, they're able to um, use their system to to broadcast every Friday night. And I guess it's a way that I can sort of launch the podcast. It's sort of an official sort of way. So, yeah, and of course, um, after the uh, episode airs. I do post the links on um, Facebook and Twitter, and um, EQD helps me out as well. It's a cool thing to be <laughs> to be on the nightly roundup, which is great. Um, I know what that, you that's, mean. It's part of the vindication. It's like, you know. It's um, like that yes moment. Like, yes. Exactly. <laughs> but um, nobody really even noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, and... Um, you know, some people have asked me, "Oh, have you have you thought about doing a live show?" And I thought, I don't want to be up that late or early in the morning. Um, and so I am mindful of time differences, but um, it is a pre-recorded program. Mm-hmm. Um, but I try to make it as um, sound as live as possible. Ah, uh, yes, less less editing, more natural oh, talking. Yeah. Live live shows can be great. <laughs> um, you can get some great spontaneous moment. It also allows for uh, feet feedback and inter- mm. and uh, interaction with the audience but ah oh, i am so thankful for editing sometimes i got to share this one story i was interviewing um james cork oh. for one of my one of my segments and his derp was just so hilarious that i actually kept it into the main broadcast cuz it was just that funny <laughs> We're, we're there and we're like, hey, welcome to the show. And with us we, today, we've got James Cork. He's like, wait, are we starting already? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> and it was just so good that I'm like, well, I'm leaving that in the main one because it was just fantastic. Um, but yeah, the power of editing uh, can be very thankful when you say, oh, oh, I was really not meant to say that. Let's just cut out those five seconds of uh, material. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. This show has a lot of bloopers. Some are kept in, some are left out. And with, what, 148 episodes? We have a lot of uh, bloopers, yeah. Sweetie Bot, <laughs> burn the evidence. Uh, on it. So, uh, have you thought about going t- or putting your shows on other stations? Um, I have. Um, but 
I guess I'm pretty loyal to the hive because mm-hmm. um I guess one of which, you know, they said, Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're happy to air your content. Um and it's also a relatively new station, so I feel like, you know, I want to help them grow. I think I was shopping for a little while for, for another station. Um so I know, yeah, it's about trying to reach a maximum audience as much as possible. So um but since the the show is a podcast in nature, um I don't know, you never know, but that's, you know, some of the Something for me to think about this, you know, to get it aired on other stations. I am an attention seeker by nature, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, true that, true that. Do also look at Ponyville Live to expand your horizons because, well, Ponyville Live has the Hive Radio and also, you no know, Hoof's Bart. Absolutely. Mm. I'm actually, um, it's supposed to add my show onto the directory, so I have to, t- I have to check some up on that. Silver! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Silver Eagle? Yep. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> okay. uh, yes, he's on my list. Yep. <laughs> uh, now I'm looking at where's my show? Silver! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh boy, but yeah. Uh, but yes, as to attention seeking, I can definitely uh, attest to Lucas's constant Facebook posts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, it's a good thing. It's like a reminder there. It's like, hey, my show's coming up. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot the show's coming up. Especially when you've got everything going on day to day, and then you just get home and want to switch off. It's like, oh, hey, I'm burning and proud on. Oh, well, it's like a, it's like in the old days. You know, you had a, you know, anyone had a website, no one knew existed <laughs> unless you told them. <laughs> so, like and like you said earlier, yeah, it still very much relies on word of mouth. And um, social media, Facebook and Twitter, it's simply the digital version of it as far as I'm concerned. Oh, true that, true that, true that. Uh, we can relate a lot with what we do here. I, I know your pain. I, I've been through your pain much longer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh at that. No, it's, no, it's laughable. It's funny because uh, you, you're going to get this soon. You're going to get this soon. Once you reach your 50th episode, you'll be pondering, what the hell am I doing? I guess what I can say to that is I do the show out of love, I guess, and and probably wouldn't be doing it otherwise. Mm, true, yeah. Especially with all the friends I made. And, you know, um, I recently um, I was down in Melbourne for a couple of weeks for Christmas and New Year's. And um, I um, I helped, uh, uh, I organized a meetup and got to meet um, actually two of the people that were on my show. And um, they were fantastic to meet up with in person. So it was, a, it was great to put... Um, a face behind the voice. <laughs> yeah. To the voice, that's right. Yeah, I, I totally understand. I totally understand. If I'm sandbagging my own show, it's because it's for comedy's sake. <laughs> I put a lot of, <laughs> well, I put a lot of hard work behind it, and it's a lot of fun. And for comedy's sake, I'll sandbag it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, if you, if you don't poke fun of yourself, then you, you're too serious. Uh, true. We're not CNN. <laughs> <laughs> If we were Fox News, I'd be out of here already. <laughs> uh, no, I, I definitely know that feeling because uh, I went to my first Brony, Brony meetup early last year and then there was a couple after that. And then I'm like, oh, am, am, am I known enough to create my own Brony meetup? So I got on the Facebook group and I'm like, hey, guys, who's actually interested in coming along, meeting up? Because uh, it was right before Christmas. So we had this uh, heartwarming eve meetup. Oh, wow. And so I'm like, uh, yeah, just going to have a meetup on this day. I think it was like the 16th of December or whatever it was. Anyway, um, yeah, people actually turned up. And we ended up with about 20 people, I'd say. And it was actually really successful. Well, but uh, no matter who you are, it's always good to just get out there, chat to people. Um, and even if you think, oh, I'm not famous enough to do that, just give it a shot. Hmm. Oh, I remember my first meetup when I did. It was for the first anniversary of the NBA show. Uh, it was February 25th, but I think I did it on February 22nd or something like that of 2013. First meetup at a mall. Wow. It did not turn out well. Uh, it was okay. And uh, there's a lot of things that happened on that day. And later that night, did a live episode, which you can catch on the YouTubes at the mbsshow.com. Yes, we also have it there too. So, <laughs> personal plug. Yeah. Uh, but soon you, but soon it'll be fun for you, for you newcomers like you, Lucas and Lycan. 
have fun with it. Have fun. Like, don't take it too seriously. And, well, just have fun. That's what it's all about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, obvious question is obvious. How did you get Michael Dobson on? <laughs> with the power of Twitter. Mm. Um, I like to say to people, I was like, you know, if, if I thought, you know, I wanted to get reached out to as, you know, as many actors I could think of from the show. And, um, and yeah, I tweeted him and, you know, he tweeted me back and then we were just communicating over Twitter <laughs> with, uh, with, the, with direct messaging and, um, <laughs> and became instant friends, which is fantastic. And, um, it's really cool to have that kind of relationship with, with, um, with someone that, you know, forces a character that you admire that, um, I mean, uh, we talked about how Rainbow Dash is the character I relate to the most. And um, if I would have to say the background pony I relate to most is is Bulk Biceps because of his attitude to life. It's, you know, it's high energy. And um, I'm that kind of person as well. So, um, so yeah, favorite background pony, Bulk Biceps. Is he a background pony still technically? He does have a line or a few lines. You He's know, still now, background. So. He's still the background guy if he doesn't talk that much. So consider him background. Yeah. He so, doesn't say much, but when he does, it definitely counts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Um, no, I can't do it. There's only one man that can do it, and that's Michael Dobson. Yeah. Um, at Michael Dobson 07. I look forward to meeting him in person. I mean, he's up in Canada, and... Um, I really want to go to te- go to Canada one day. I mean, initially the reason was, you know, to find a Stargate because Stargate was made there. Mm-hmm. I'm a major Stargate fan. Mm. Um, I was a huge fan for a long time, still am, but now I love My Little Pony more. Mm. Um, it happened. It happened. Uh, you know, what, a- <laughs> what can you do? But the real reason that Lucas got Michael Dobson on the show was because Lucas's power level was over <laughs> 9,000. <000. laughs> <laughs> uh, like it what does the power level say about his <laughs> I can do it my joke <laughs> well uh, why are we referencing much, that again not much for improvement is there <laughs> okay but, well uh, Rom fun fact uh, Michael Dobson is the ocean dub for Nepa from Dragon Ball oh. Z oh yeah that's right so you forgot about that yep. yeah that makes sense now sorry yeah no problem and you have to remember that Ocean Dub and Funimations are two totally different things Funimation is American yet Ocean Dub is Canadian okay mm. no, there no. you go and he's done and he's done a ton of that he really has so um, so uh, listeners if you haven't tuned in um, make sure you know um, uh, I don't know if you guys post up the link but yes um, if, if you haven't uh, listened to the show what, listen to the Volk Biceps episode uh, first. You know, you, you'll fall in love with him as much as I have. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I'll be sure to do that. I'll be sure to do that. So, let's see. What else have we not touched yet, um, Lucas? I guess maybe um, where where do I think where things are going? Hmm. The future. Uh, what, is the, what is my brony future? Well, let me just check my crystal ball. <laughs> Ask again later. Um... <laughs> At least for the immediate future, um, I will be uh, leading a panel, um, Pony Podcasters and Guests at PonyCon AU this year. So wow. um, this is also my very first PonyCon. So I'm not exactly sure what to expect. And I think by the end of it, I'll never be the same. <laughs> oh, that, that's true. That's true. My first convention was Buck. And yeah, I'm broke. <laughs> And oh, you're in! You're in for an absolute surprise there, Lucas. It's amazing. It's fantastic. As Norman can um, can test. surely back me up there. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. When you go to a pony convention, it's awesome. Pro tip: bring a bigger bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and well, and what happens from there? Well, I want to see the um, see the show keep growing. You know, um, get to know more and more bronies at that grassroots level and continue to explore the fandom and you know as the show grows you know and uh like to see my professional career grow as well good on you man good on you so and who knows maybe that might cross uh, cross paths in the end true true so you were saying that you have a panel at pony con eu this year mm-hmm. so uh how did you go that panel up asking you shall receive <laughs> they put up onto their website do you want to host a panel <laughs> oh boy okay Email them. It's like, yeah, I'd like to host a panel, and they said, yeah, and also a little bit of me saying, quick, send in your application, send it in. 
That's right. It was actually Lycan who really encouraged me to to push through with it because I was like, uh, uh, and it's like, no, like, like, do it, do it, <laughs> do it. Um, and you know they, you know they said yes, and then we, um, I guess it's literally over the last last couple of weeks we um, already built um, a panel of six and uh, made up of myself, uh, Lycan, um, uh, Navin, uh, Node. Uh, noteworthy from uh, Hoofwave, um, Spinning Riven, who's also who's a um, rising um, uh, Brony musician, as well as a couple of um, couple of my guests from I'm Brony and I'm Proud, um, uh, Mitchell Andrews, who is um, I can't remember their all names, and Pony Hawk Center. So who, um, yes, as I mentioned before, if we had to, if the, if there was a king of Bronies in Australia, he'd dead. Well, in my book, he'd he'd definitely be that. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, what's the panel going to be about? Like you said, podcasting. So, dedicated to podcasting only. Well, this this might be a MBS show exclusive because I've actually got the draft agenda. So, oh, yay! Um, but however, it I haven't totally uh, it hasn't been totally fully voted off by the panel, so I'm not totally <laughs> sure if I should share it yet. Um, <laughs> but I think that it has it, it's it is approved. But what I can say. Um, we'll be covering three topics, one of which, yes, we'll be, you know, talking about our shows and, you know, what we learned, the people we talk to, um, and a couple of funny ones as well, exploring the, you know, the world of spaghetti and, um, and, a, and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, I haven't done a panel before and, you know, for some reason I, I feel like, you know, this is something famous people do and <laughs> that the fact it's turned around so quickly is amazing and, um, you know, hopefully we get, you know, um, you know, a fair few people come see us and, um, look forward to, you you know, and it's also a chance to meet, meet even more bronies, you know, and promote the shows. Good on you. Good on you. And well, good luck on the panel. Um, I wish I could go there, but after looking at my income, yeah, challenging income or did you do something in Australia that you unfortunately are banned from? Uh, no, we, we don't talk about that one thing I did. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't involve cowbells and apples. <laughs> oh, that was me. So that was you? Mm, no one. Oh, well, one hell of a story. Yep. Oh, dear. But yes, I I will be on that panel as well, so it should be very interesting and lively and fun. Like and bring the apple bloom. Oh, I won't be doing that. <laughs> uh, well, okay, at least uh, go there with your Rainbow Dash onesies. Oh, yes. No, I actually did go to the last PonyCon AU in uh, my Rainbow Ash onesie. It was absolutely fantastic. Head to toe. Complete blue outfit. <laughs> uh, and I'll do it on the panel. People remember you. Oh, yeah. yeah. People will remember me <laughs> if I do that. But it, it'll be uh, summertime, so it'll be far too hot for that. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, well. Uh, we're... Okay, now I'm going to go there. <laughs> well, I actually decide. am considering going because um, I have a T-shirt with uh, my OC drawn on the front of it mm-hmm. and uh, some art by James Cork on the back of it. Mm. So, um, yeah, I am definitely considering wearing that to the panel. It's interesting you say that, like, because I've um, got a friend of mine who's actually going to be whipping up an I'm Brony and I'm Proud uh, T-shirt, especially for the event. So I'm looking forward to that. Wow. Very awesome, cool. Awesome. Awesome. So I think we covered almost everything. So is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, I would like to thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure being on the MBA show, and um, it's for me it's um, it's for me a highly reputable show, and it's um, especially with all, with all the guests you've had on it, and um, it's um, it's a pleasure to be associated with a fine program. Oh, you're, you're welcome, and thank you for coming on. And trust me, this show. It's not as good as you think. It's not as good as you say it is. It's mediocre at best. Oh, come on, Norman. It's a great show. It's fantastic. You're only biased because Apple Bloom was on. <laughs> I'm still jelly over that. <laughs> so, yes, if you aren't aware, Norman Sanzo has actually interviewed Michelle Krieber and also has a signed album by her. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's true. It's true. And the caliber and of guests, and, and the caliber of the guests, and interviewed on this show is considerably high. So yeah. So, 
and and that that's a beauty about you know for me more podcasts are better if we can you know cover the fan at every level mm-hmm. you know we're we're you know part of a big team oh that's true that's true it's it's like how do I put this each show has their own uh, spin on things like this show has well news which we're going to cover soon unless we forget about talk about it but then Bro wouldn't have a job and some shows do only interviews so yeah um, <laughs> there's many kind of shows so well if you're not interested in this one there's always the next one absolutely and um, um, and you're approaching episode 150 so congratulations oh thank you very much it's going to be what um, the third no well I'm bad at math so it's going to be yeah we'll be in our third year then true that true that Hmm. Congratulations! Oh, three years of doing this. Uh... It's and all worth three it, though, more. isn't it, Norman? Pardon? It's all worth it, though, isn't it, Norman? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting to talk to you, getting to talk to Rom and Lucas here, and also James and oh, Silver, both Silver, Silver Eagle and Silver Quill. So yeah, th- those guys are awesome. Those guys are awesome. So anywho, uh, Lucas, where can they find you online? Uh, Bronies, you can find I'm Brony and I'm Proud at soundcloud.com forward slash I-B-A-I-P show. Or you can follow us on the Twitter and uh, like us on Facebook. Yay, they have the Facebooks. We have the Facebooks too. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait, we do. Uh, you, we, yeah, we. <laughs> uh, but anyway. And um, I'm Brony and I'm Proud tells you, make sure you like the MBS show and subscribe to their YouTube channel because they are awesome. And do the same too, guys. Um, cross-pollination is good. So anyway, thank you once again, Lucas, for coming on and talking to us. So do you think you can join us for news time? I would love to. It'd be my pleasure. Yay. That's awesome. Then let's move on to the next topic. Rom, it's your time. Righteous. And in today's news time, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic wins the 2014 Gem Award for the Best All-Age Comics. IEW's My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic book series has won the 2014 Gem Awards for Best All Age Comics. The Diamond Gem Awards are selected by comic book speciality retailers and recognized within the comic book industry as the pinnacle of sales achievement for comic book artists, writers, publishers, and industry executives who work in one of America's most unique art forms. Equestria Daily hereby offers its congratulations to the IDW and the hardworking comic book artists, writers, letters, and editors who work so very hard to make this possible. Congratulations, guys! Yep. You did it! <laughs> Congratulations from us, too. We love the comic, and that's why we keep buying them. Except for 25 and 26. What were you thinking? What was 25? Oh, I haven't read that yet. Uh, like no a, spoilers. Like, a, um, once you finish reading that, tell me what you think. Like, seriously, I, I want to know. Like, you haven't been soiled yet. No, no, I, uh, I haven't read anything about it i don't know any reviews i don't know anything about them yet although the warning sounds quite ominous um i was actually just looking through my comics collection this afternoon uh because i found out that i'm missing a couple of my volumes because i i can't i don't have the time to go and collect each individual comic as they come out so i have to get the trader back versions Mm -hmm. and um i was looking through them today and yes, because Katie Cook and Andy Price were at a convention nearby, I have them signed by them. Yay! Oh wow, that's cool. Oh, it's so good. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm missing quite a few. And I was looking them up online. It's about uh, twenty bucks for me um, to get the two that I'm missing. Uh, I need the Friends Forever Volume Two and the Friendship Is Magic Volume Six. Oof. Uh, and I believe see. 25, 26 is in the volume 6 one. I love My Little Pony Friends Forever. Um, it's it's a yeah, cute little series. It's sort of, I guess it sort of appeared um, you know, as a tag off the success of the main series. Um, and, you know, the fact that the show has taken off this huge other life outside of it um, in the print form is amazing. And, um, yeah, and... Um, I actually don't do the print thing myself. I <laughs> download from Comixology, and uh, oh. uh, it's quite quite useful useful website. I know what you um, mean. I know what you mean. I do the same thing too because, well, don't have a comic book store that's super close to me, so I I don't get the chance to. 
get them physically. So the best, the next best thing is to download them via the Comixology app. And the best part is they have this um, dynamic viewing thing where it goes by panel by panel, and it's so awesome. It oh, sure yeah. is. I have seen the panel by panel. Uh, I actually have to travel an hour or so to Brisbane to get my uh, comic books when I get them, or I get them uh, online and delivered to me. Well, do that, man. That's much better. Like for twenty five, twenty six, do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But like, and you're right. There's nothing that breeds the actual printed version. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so true. Yeah. That's so true. Printed version is much better. I have actually uh, done some comic book reviews with uh, you guys mm. and Silver Quill on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember doing the rarities. Ah, uh, yeah, the rarity that was one. That's, that's amazing. Good. That episode, yeah. and also the uh, Big Mac arc. <laughs> where Big Mac has to go get some names. That, that's, uh, that, that was, was so purely the story. Mm-hmm. So good. So much fun. Uh, if uh, anybody here is listening, probably um, it's. I'm surprised if you've got no idea, but we also do a review show called the MBS Show Reviews. Very original. So what we do there is we review comics and the show. Since the show is on hiatus, we review the comics. And currently, we have covered almost all of the... Well, we covered all of the micro-series. And as of January 22nd, we've covered all of the My Little Pony... Friendship is Magic series. So, yay. Great work, guys. Yeah, so, yeah, there's still comics coming on or coming out, and we'll cover them too. But now we're going to work on The Friends Forever, and yay, um, that's going to be fun. And having people on there is cool, it's fun. And talking about comics, eh, it's different, but still the same. So, Eddie, who, congratulations, IDW, and people from the comic, you did a great job, and keep on doing what you do. Yeah, we'll support them. If it's good, we'll support. Yeah, they definitely have some great professional people on there. And uh, also have Heather Breckel, who <coughs> we have uh, uh, interviewed before on the show. <laughs> yeah, true that. He- Heather's an awesome gal. Heather is an awesome gal. I do believe that uh, she follows you on the Tumblr, eh, Rom? Yes, she does. Uh, that's awesome of her. But anywho, let's move on to the next news. Ro. Celeste hitches a ride to an international space station. Surprise, surprise. For those that don't follow the world of space news, SpaceX recently launched the CRS-5 rocket bound for the International Space Station. Apparently, someone working on the circuit boards for an, in- for an item heading up decided to sneak a silkscreen Celestia for the trip. Celestia will be making her permanent home on a device mounted outside the ISS. Yay. So, Ro, what would you say about Celestia going to space? Well, she is a celestial princess. <laughs> uh, we're full of puns. Indeed. It's just out of this world. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yay! You're, you're getting... You're learning, Ro. You're learning. Yay! Usually I'm the one to make bad puns. <laughs> yeah, my career skyrocketed from this point. Uh. That pun was. Oh my just god! It looks stellar. absolutely amazing. <laughs> the puns on the circuit board. <laughs> oh, both. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, I have a thing for puns. <laughs> uh, but yes, th- this is uh, like Lucas said, amazing because well, we have a scientist guy who loves the show, is willing to do this, and probably if he gets found out, he will lose his job. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that board can now be considered a solar panel <laughs> <laughs> well bronies in space there we go it's yeah, official lightning <laughs> space NASA you've re- yeah. NASA SpaceX you've officially been bronified uh, Houston we have a problem oh god but still hmm. this is cool this is cool I mean for bronies who are into the science field, like Kelpin, this is cool. So, is it safe to is it safe to say that circuit board is twenty percent cooler? <laughs> Probably. Twenty uh, percent more, more efficient. <laughs> but why Celestia out of all ponies? I thought we were over that. She's a celestial princess. Yeah, true. But Luna's also yeah. one too. The moon is Earth's. Uh, what you call that? Satellite. 
Yes. Mm. All right. But this is cool. This is cool. Besides the puns, um, I I don't think we can say much because this is really scientific and way beyond me. I think it's great. It's nothing more science. It's nothing more scientific than ponies. Oh, true that. True that. And um, oh, probably I'm not sure if you want to add this, but um, yeah, Equestria Daily released their top ten of. Uh, Best pony animations, and thank goodness Flufflepuff made it into the list. <laughs> well, duh, I'd be outraged if they didn't put him on the list. Which is exactly why they put it in. <laughs> they know, they fear. I do remember that uh, Fluffy Mixer, the creator for uh, Flufflepuff, mentioned that um, Pink Fluffy Unicorns was not one of his uh, favorite works. It's like the Frozen song, over abused, man. Yeah, true. From what I understand, and um, if I do remember right, at Buck, Catchy Sounds played the Pink Fluffy Unicorn song live in front of the entrance, just to uh, well entertain the guests. And right after that, Ice Cream played Discord. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yes. No, is... play the Smile song. <laughs> Actually, being a DJ on um, Everfree Network, and which is now the Cantalot Hill, I had that all the time. Because I'd go, hey, anyone got a request for a song? And then everyone would rub, play Discord! And so one time I was um, annoyed at them. So I'm like, right, I am going to play Discord. And then I played Discord. <laughs> and they're like, yay, Discord! <laughs> oh, uh... that was great. Hey, just just on that um, Celestia going to space, it's actually not the first time a um, a pony has been put onto a circuit board. Oh, Previously, really? Luna has been put onto a circuit board, which has been sent to the uh, International Space Station as well. So Luna's best pony still. So Luna got there first. First mare on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're full of puns. And I do see that Chips of Discord also made it into the running for top 10 best pony fan animation. Well, congratulations, Lionheart and Spirit. Your work is there. Cool. But anywho, but anywho, I think that's about it, right? No more news, from? Nope, that's all it. I don't write the news. I read them. Alrighty then, alrighty then. So anywho, let's move on to the next topic, which is shoutouts. And my first shoutout goes to you, Lucas. Thank you for coming on. Oh, you're very, oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, th- thank you for sharing your stories with us. It's an honor having you on. Thank you. Thank you. And also to you, Rom. Thank you for coming on and reading the news. That's what I do best. Uh, well, third thing that I do best. What's the first two? <laughs> Complain about <laughs> stuff and draw. That's not a word. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I've edited that out because so I just forgot where I was. Yeah. Okay, anywho. Yeah, anywho, uh, thank you, Lycan. Thank you for coming on. Uh, do do more puns. You haven't been very punny this episode. Uh, I, Rom's been stealing them all. <laughs> I know. I taught you well, Padwan. <laughs> <laughs> May the uh, horse be with you all. Uh, yay. But uh, definitely a shout out to Canterlot Hill. They're now about 10, 11 days into the new year. Brand new website. And everything seems to be going pretty well over there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, shoutouts. Um, Rom, any? Hi, Mom. <laughs> uh, all right. And, like, and yours is for Canter Hill? Yeah, uh, just a uh, shout-out for Canterlot Hill, because uh, they seem to be going pretty well two weeks down. Um, not too many hiccups so far, but uh, they're looking pretty good. Awesome, awesome. And, Lucas, what about you? Shoutouts? Oh yes, I'd like to sh- um, big shout out to my fellow bronies, and I look forward to um, to sharing your stories. So feel free to hit us up. Awesome, I'll put that into the show notes. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at embedshow@gmail.com. And if you'd like to email us personally, well, links are in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. Sudibot will tweet stuff about what she's doing and life and probably talk about not editing certain episodes that are going to be done like this one for example oh she's not excited for this one but i just replaced her battery she'll be fine okay it's like that cup of coffee in the morning 
Yeah, all right. I, I hope so because uh, according to her, she said that this episode is derpy because of me. Yeah. Sorry about that. And if talking about me, you can also catch me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about stuff that I like, which is toys, food, and, well, whatever tickles my fancy. Uh, what about you, Ro? Where can I get you? You can find me at reliciousgala.tumblr.com on my DeviantArt, reliciousdeviantart.com. Awesome. Just a side note, I'm available for hire for only $20. I don't you all see, yes? <laughs> uh, yes, moving on. Lycan, what about you? Where can I find you? You can find me on Twitter at Very Lycan, and you can also find me on DeviantArt, Very Lycan. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. Links will be provided in show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Romeo Old. I am Lycan. I am Lucas, a.k.a. Lucky Knight. And we'll try to be on next week with... More guest stars! Yay! Lucky stars! Yay! More space reference. Oh, no, no. Anyway, <laughs> bye bye, guys. Bye. bye! Bye! I see the markings in the sand, so I follow them for a while. Then they stop so abruptly, I look up as Feathers fall And they fly Above the Clouds Laughing Dancing like butterflies Why can't I be there Too Soaring high Across the skies Cause these wings Keep me grounded Tethered here on solid earth below But I know it'll all be worth it It's not as if I'll never ever know I'll be up there with them soon My silhouette scarring the moon The air will keep my form surrounded Keep me grounded I see myself ten years down Blazing, raising a crowd It might just be a dream now But I'll get there Somehow Some days they'll wanna help me out Some days they just sit and spin I'll stump them all someday Get out of this rut I'm in Cause these wings keep me grounded Tethered here on solid earth below But I know it'll all be worth it It's not as if I'll never ever know I'll be up there with them soon My silhouette scarring the moon Air will keep my form surrounded But till then These wings keep me grounded
on solid earth below But I know it'll all be worth it It's not as if I'll never ever know Time to do the day I'll be up there with them soon I said the wet scarring the moon The air will keep my form surrounded But until then These wings keep me Keep me grounded And then sort of and and then you know people can't tune in the you know I um uh, I I uh, uh, yeah, th- this is what happens during the editing of my podcast. Sometimes, yeah, I will <laughs> make that sound quite a lot if I stuff up. Um, but of course, with the power of editing, it goes away. Um, well, at the end of the show for bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anywho, uh, Lucas, where can they find you online? Okay, so... Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but let like, just rebooting Lucas right now. Yeah, um, yeah. Just let me just, um, yeah, just, yeah. Just, uh, okay, um, okay. I'm I'm gonna try and phrase this well. All right. Give me a, give me fifteen seconds. Take your time, man. Take your time. Thanks. This is not a live show. We're recording this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> even though if it's, this is a live show, we derp a lot, so it's cool. And now I got this. Uh, now I got the trotting movie slate going through my head right now.